Support School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Real Agriculture comes to you today from the University of Guelph, where we're joined by Dr. Fred Below from the University of Illinois. Welcome, Fred. Pleasure. Now, we're here at Farm Smart 14, and uh, you just finished your presentation, Seven Wonders um, of High Corn Yield. And I want to run through those seven key factors, but you talked about some prerequisites that need to get done first. Yeah, the prerequisites are sort of the table stakes. They're the things that have to be in place first in order to have the wonders express their ability to increase yield. And these are things that uh, are important but uh, don't necessarily add yield. And they're drainage, uh, weed control, pest control, making sure you have the proper level of base fertility. So th those are the prerequisites that uh, have to be in place before each of the seven wonders can be used to express its yield and increase. Now you have actually attached a, a, a bushel of value to each of your wonders. And number one, most important, is whether and for which you put 70 bushels. Okay. Yeah, and that, uh, what, what I've done is I've, I've given an average value that's associated with each of those wonders. And, you know, that, that a lot of those represent years of research um, where, where, we, where all of the factors that we research actually end up being one of those factors. And that allows us to go back and say, well, what was the range that uh, that factor attributed to yield? And every farmer knows that uh, the weather is the biggest factor that impacts their yield. Um, and, and then, you know, weather comes in all shapes and sizes. It's, uh, it, it's, it's temperature at planting, it's rain during flowering, it's temperature during grainful, it's wind, it's hail, you, you name it, it's the weather. And uh, so sometimes the weather works for you, sometimes it works against you. But it wouldn't be uncommon to, to see a swing in yields that does uh, 70 plus bushels attributed to weather. You know, if you look at the average yield in my state uh, last year in the drought versus this year in a better year, there was the average yield is almost 70 bushels different. So that, that, that's the biggest factor. It's obviously the one that has the biggest impact on crop yield. And number two, you had it. As, as nitrogen, and obviously some weather impact there, um, and another 70 bushels there. Yeah, it, 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 I, what I've seen is that if uh, farmers use just the right amount of nitrogen, that's the difference between no nitrogen and the exact right rate, they can gain about 70 bushels. And, and sometimes it's more and less. Remember that uh, that average value is an average of a range. And I said that uh, nitrogen was the factor under farmers' control that had the biggest impact on crop yield, but uh, a nuance of this whole concept is that all of these seven wonders interact with each other. And as a rough rule, the higher on the list, the more impact that factor exerts over those below. And I, I use the nitrogen, nitrogen in this as an example. Every single thing about fertilization and use of nitrogen by the plant is influenced by the weather. Whether you can apply it, whether it's lost, whether it's available, how the plant uses it. And so, and, and you can't have weather-induced nitrogen loss and grow high corn yields. It's simply too far up the wonder list. Number three, um, hybrid selection. And interesting, because this is the one that you said growers have control of. Uh, 50 bushels. 50 bushels, yeah. Uh, hybrid selection is the most important decision that growers make every year. And uh, I see a lot of emotion to the hybrid selection, more than rational thinking. You know, a lot of them buy off the you know, same brand or the same person they've done. But uh, all hybrids aren't created equal. When, uh, when we screen hybrids between the highest and the lowest, we would always get at least a 50 bushel yield swing. And these are all frontline commercial hybrids. And what I showed the growers here today is that uh, the poorer the weather, the greater the swing and the more important hybrid decision is. That's the most important decision that growers make each year. And if you think about biotechnology, you know, adding protection traits, ultimately adding stress traits like, uh, like drought resistance, that really makes the hybrid selection important. Now, let's talk a little bit about rotation previous crop. Soybeans will, will pay for you, but if you go too much corn, you're going to pay. Yeah, the previous crop or crop rotation was the... Uh, was the was number four and, and uh, I had 25 bushels yep yep and, and in my and in my state you know we're, we're a great corn and soybean desert if soybean was the previous crop then the next corn crop is benefited on average by uh, 25 bushels um, and, and it has a lot a lot of reasons uh, pro probably the main one is that uh, soybeans a taproot plant and those tap roots grow deep and that, the corn that corn root loves to get in the channel of the previous soybean root but if corn was the previous crop, then it goes the other way around. There's a continuous corn yield penalty. 
And while I didn't have a chance to show it, if you have bad weather for that penalty is even greater. So uh, previous crop or their crop rotations uh, is the number four factor. Number five, at 20 bushels, plant populations, you said most growers simply aren't planting them. Yeah, they, I, I, you know, plant, plant population is one that can go uh, both ways. You can either get a 20 bushel increase by having more, or sometimes you can get a decrease, <laughs> particularly if you have the wrong weather. But uh, I chided growers, I said that most of them I don't think are planting enough seed. And I don't think they understand the, uh, in the potential of today's genetics to be able to tolerate higher po plant populations than ever, ever before. And uh, I showed growers that uh, in order to grow high yields, you're going to have to plant more plants. An increase in plant population is one of the main factors that has occurred in corn production over the last 50 years. And a lot of the yield increases we see it are related to the fact that we're planting more plants. And if you think about it, it's the plant that intercepts light, it's the plant that makes grand, you know, as long as you can space it out and manage it uh, within reason, the more of them, the better. Now you mentioned just some, some numbers at 200 bushels, you're looking at 32,000, 250 bushels, 36,000, 300 bushels, 45,000. Yeah, I did, a little, I did a little yield component analysis to try and uh, show growers how yield components changed as a function of uh, differences in uh, plant uh, population. And I, I tried to show them how it, uh, you're really going to have to need, increase the plant population to, you know, to grow the really high yields, the so-called uh, 300 bushels. And if you look at the, uh, the number of, of, of plants that are in the, the contest winners in the U.S. National Corn Growers Contest have used, they're always in the 40,000, high 40,000 or plus. So uh, I, I did a little math exercise showing growers the relationship between how many plants it takes, how many kernels are on every plant, and what the weight of each seed is. Those are the things that multiply together uh, make up a uh, grower's yield. And, and by my thinking, sadly, there's uh, no way you're going to grow 300 bushels without being in the 40,000 plus plants per acre range. Mm -hmm. Number six on your list was tillage at 15 bushels. Yeah, and tillage, is, uh, tillage is one of these things where you're, you're really trying to control the wonders above it. The, the reason we would till is so that the soil warms up faster and we can plant earlier and maybe achieve a more uniform stand. But if you think about no tillage, it's all about trying to conserve or save water. So uh, no, no doubt that the tillage that's most appropriate depends on the geography and the soil type that that grower has. But when they, the, the tillage practice that they employ is, is really designed to, you know, you know, to, to try to get the, the, the most out of those, uh, those wonders that are above it. Final number on your list, number seven, growth regulators at, number, at 10 bushels. Yeah, and this is, a, this is the one I said that had the wide, widest range. The, because uh, you know, some growth regulators can actually decrease yield. But uh, you know, the, idea, the idea of getting the seed out of the ground faster or of keeping the leaves greener longer, there are some compounds that have growth regulator effects. Mm -hmm. I use the, uh, the, the stay green from strawberryland based fungicides as an example of a growth regulator effect. And uh, the, there's a lot of interest in growth regulators because this is the only category that uh, farmers can use more than one of and then you know, presumably get an additive benefit from uh, the increase in yield. So I, I, I put all these factors together. I showed growers that uh, if you have good weather and you've optimized the value of each one of those seven wonders, that uh, 260 bushels is possible. Then I also read them that, uh, that it's pretty easy to grow less than 260 bushels by not having one of those factors optimized. And really come down, you summed it up like, you know, more plants, narrow rows, you got to feed and protect that plant. Is that how these all work together? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that you know, it's the plant that makes yield. And so the, the idea is to somehow get more of them out there. And, and whether that involves a narrow row arrangement, whether that involves a, a certain type of hybrid, you know, the, the key to high yield is, is more plants, but you have to commit to those plants. You know, if you have more plants, you have more hungry roots to feed, so the fertility becomes more important. As you increase the number of plants, you increase the stress on the plant, and the protection becomes more important. And so we ultimately showed the growers that uh, it's really a systems approach uh, to, to, to try and get to the next yield level. There's no one thing they're going to do to hit the home run, I'm afraid. It's a, it's a sort of a team approach but by a combination of management factors. Hey, great insights, Fred. Thanks for sharing. Pleasure to be here today.